Texas A&M quarterback Connor Wigman and the Aggies' new offensive coordinator Colin Klein could be the perfect match for each other. I think Klein has done a lot of things well at Kansas State that could potentially be maximized with a quarterback like Connor Wigman. And I think Wigman having Klein come in could be put in some really good situations as a quarterback. So I want to take a few minutes and talk about what each kind of bring to the table and why they could be a really good fit for for each other. If this is your first time tuning into the channel, we're just a big quarterback hub. We talk all things quarterbacks, from film breakdowns to outlook videos like this to, to anything related to the quarterback position is fair game here. We also have a podcast where we have current and former quarterbacks, coaches, skill trainers come on and talk about the quarterback position. So with that said, let's talk about Colin Klein first and, and kind of his brief history as an offensive coordinator because he's only been calling plays for a few years now, but he's had Kansas State in a really good position offensively. And, and before Colin plays, you know, when, when he was actually a player, he was one of the, the best college quarterbacks that year. I think he was a Heisman finalist in like 2012, right? So Heisman finalist starts coaching, moving up through the ranks. His first like full year calling plays was 2022 for Kansas State, I believe. If I'm wrong, you can correct me. Then 2023, this past year is when the offense kind of took off for Kansas State. Uh, they were number 10 in scoring offense, number 13 in rushing offense, number 23 in total offense in the country. They had seven games where they had more than 400 yards. Um, 400 total yards, right? So I know I just mentioned a lot of rushing statistics, but I think getting the run game going for a quarterback like Connor Wigman and what his skill sets are could be could be a really, um, not just attractive, but could be really beneficial thing for for, for Wigman, right? And so the, the quarterbacks are no slack or no joke either for, for Klein, right? Every Johnson, of course, is the quarterback that, you know, pretty much had a hand in, in making Walker Howard transfer. And both those quarterbacks played really well in that system for Kansas State, right? So in 2023, the quarterbacks for Kansas State had 29 touchdowns, 10 picks, and just over 3,100 yards passing, uh, 3,100 right over. And their yards per attempt were, were only 7.4, right? So what did they do as a quarterback? What did Klein ask his quarterbacks to do? Well, number one, it was to take what the defense gives you. Right. Yeah, they took some shots downfield, but compared to a lot of other offenses, they really weren't trying to spread the field. Their run game got going. They were very good at running the ball, and Klein's offense was was able to do a really good job putting running backs in position, have kind of creative running running schemes. Right. So both the quarterbacks for Kansas State last year both could run. Every Johnson, of course, is probably considered an elite runner for a quarterback, but still, Walker Howard could use his legs. So both quarterbacks ran, and they're able to keep drives alive, not just running the ball, but taking what the defense gives them. So I think that offensively for Kansas State last year, the run game got going and it helped the pass game get going, even though they didn't take a lot of shots deep, right? So overview of, of Klein's offense the past few seasons, a really creative way to get the run game going. The quarterbacks take care of the ball, push the ball downfield at times, but not really, they haven't really shown to, to maximize that potential as of yet. And it was more just taking what the defense gives them, right? That's why they had a 7.4 yards per attempt. So C Connor Whitman. A quarterback I personally am very high on, and the main reason why is a lot of people who are smarter than me uh, when it comes to football are high on him. They think he's got a ton of talent. So the, these these scouts and these coaches and people who are who are real high on on uh, on Wigman make me behind Wigman too. He's got all the talent in the world, right? Arm strength. He's athletic, more athletic than people think. I think you can pretty much fit any offense around him. Now, maybe I'm wrong, maybe the people are wrong, maybe he doesn't pan out, and you know that would not be great for AM, but I, I think he's got a lot of talent, right? So the one thing that he hasn't been able to do is, is showcase a full season. His, his freshman year in 2022, he, he what, started four or five games, something like that, took over uh, at the end of the season, played pretty well. In 2023, I think he was off to a pretty good start, and then he got hurt in what, game four, I think he had three and a half-ish games or so. But I think you saw improvement already. Now, the schedule wasn't super tough, in 2023, the games he played besides Miami, I think was at Auburn, he got hurt and someone can correct me if I'm wrong. But I still think he showed the improvements, right? So in 2022, his yards per attempt were only 6.8. Didn't take a lot of shots downfield. It was kind of running Jimbo's offense and obviously we won't dive into too much detail about that, but it can be complex per se. In 2023, his yards per attempt were 8.2. You did see him take more shots. He had nine completions where the ball was thrown 20 yards or more in the air in just three and a half games. That's a pretty good number. Now, granted, a lot of those came against ULM and who was the other team, New Mexico maybe. It wasn't like a tough competition, that, but it still was improvement. Only one of those completions did come against Miami, right? they're, they're, they're a tough opponent. But still, I thought it was pretty good improvement. And games like that in the past for AM, 
they didn't really blow out teams like the ULM, the New Mexico. They kind of struggled with them at times and pulled away. But I thought with, with, with Wigman, I think it was it was encouraging if you're an a fan, if you're looking for some some bright spots, it was encouraging to see him take take spots, right? So I think he's extremely I think he's extremely talented. But I think it's fair to say that the jury is still out. But if he's as good as people think, then then you know AM could have a shot in 2024 uh, to, to, to do some 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 good things, right? Especially if he plays and he's as capable of as people says he is. Uh, so big things with him, he's athletic, more athletic than people think. He's got a strong arm, right? So so how do Wigman and how do, do Klein combine? How do you kind of mix the offense that Klein ran at Kansas State and the skill set, the talent that Connor Wigman have? Well, I think I think they complement each other really well. Uh, or they at least have the potential to, right? I'm not in offensive meetings. I don't know what the hell they're going on or, or exactly what they're talking about. So maybe I'm completely wrong. But just from the outside looking in, from like a broad statement, I think Klein's offense can be maximized with a quarterback like Connor Wigman. I think women can be put in positions to succeed with a creative running attack like like uh, like, like Klein has, right? So with a quarterback like Connor Wigman, who can push the ball downfield, who has a strong arm, who has shown to be able to improve year after year, even though it's only been you know two years essentially, but he was able to take steps from 2022 to 2023, I think you can spread the field more in this offense with Wigman as the quarterback. I think you get the run game going, and then as opposed to sitting that seven, seven and a half yards per tip range, I think you can push it more to like nine. I think you can take some shots deep. I think you can really spread and open up the field. So I think there's two ways to go about it. It's it's it, and I think it's basic, but I think it's using the run game, the creative ability that, that Klein has been able to put in with Kansas State and have some creative run packages, that can create some easy throws Right, and like we saw with Kansas State, it created easy throws. They took what the defense gave them, but now you add another element to that. So you have number one, create easy throws. Number two, the big element where I think Connor can really have success is you can push the ball downfield now. You're going to have open receivers underneath, yes, but I think when you take those completions, the defense starts creeping up. I think you have potential to push the ball downfield and spread the ball deeper in different parts of the field with a quarterback like Connor. Wigman, right? So I think both guys can help each other take the next step, right? Both guys can help each other continue to grow and develop. Klein's offense can continue to develop and grow as the ability with a quarterback like Wigman, the ability that he has to push the ball downfield. So I really think you can maximize the offense that Klein is running or, or has ran previously. And then you have a quarterback like Connor Wigman who can help maximize that offense. And I think getting the run game going and giving Wigman some easy throws before you set up some, you know, to help set up, set up some deep shots. I think that's also a huge beneficial kind of component to this, to this offense for, for women. So listen, I, I know every schedule is tough in the SEC, um, especially the new SEC and what's going on now. And, and, and A&M does have a tough schedule, but I think relatively speaking by A&M or by SEC standards, it's not as tough as some other schedules, right? Like, like Arkansas has got a brutal schedule, right? So it's it, Oklahoma's got a real tough schedule. You know, if you're AM, you still face LSU, Texas, and Mizzou are probably your heavy hitters from the SEC. Uh, and then you have Notre Dame to open up the year. But I think you have a favorable schedule overall as it relates to the SEC. Still going to be tough and, and, you know, still don't know what to expect with the new change at AM. But I do think the potential of, of, of Klein and the potential of Wigman, if they can combine and kind of maximize each each's efforts, and I think you have a chance to have a pretty good season. Uh, so it's a way too early outlook, but I think the combination we could see Wigman take the next step, and we could see Klein's offense continue to develop and take that next step. Also, Wigman's gonna be able to run the ball too. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Klein, you know, have some packages of where Wigman is, is using his legs. Maybe not as, or probably not as much as you know Avery Johnson, but at least just to have that threat there. You're not gonna center the offense around him uh, running the ball, but you just have that threat there, right? But if you're an a fan or if you're an SEC fan, just a college football fan in general, let me know your thoughts. What are your outlook for Wigman for the 2024 season? What do you want to see offensively? You know, How do you think they could combine what they've done at Kansas State and what Wigman's skill set is? How do you think they can combine together to make a, a really good and impressive and exciting offense to watch? So we'll have a lot more videos about Wigman and about, uh, about the Aggies. I, I think I'm probably going to do a film breakdown here soon. Of, of Wigman, maybe. Uh, we don't have a ton of, of footage last season because he only had a few games under his belt, but we'll, we'll see if we can you know, get some of Miami and put that out. But but regardless, we'll be keeping track of, of AM. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, your thoughts on Wigman. Also, let me know what other quarterback you want to see. We're going to be doing this on a regular, hopefully daily basis. We just have these quarterback outlooks 
uh, way too early outlooks, if you will, that we're going to, to put out. So like, share, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. It really does help the channel grow and help them continue to, to put out some, uh, some, some, some good content. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.